Okay, I'm playing as black. Let's just see, just uh, develop the knight as usual. Let's bring the bishop out, nice and steady. Just get the pieces activated, just to open up our dark square bishop, looking to see if we can get king safety. Let's bring the bishop out, nice and small. And castle. So, major things have been done, just need to develop one more piece appropriately, if it needs to be developed. And he's gone for a small uh, bishop move, so I think it'll give him something to think about. Give him the box shape in the middle. So let's capture. And they've captured, and they're on our bishop. Let's bring the bishop back. Looking to develop the knight, but only if it's required, really, or if it's appropriate. We've got our pieces facing their king area, so that might be a plus. They moved their rook, so we could look to get the knight out now, or I could capture this pawn first. Let's bring the knight out. Capture, if they capture. So we're going to capture it into the centre here. And this pawn on the C, well, let's do a double on there. Let's bring the rook through. They've dropped down. We can look to attack the head of the snake. It all feels a little bit too safe, doesn't it? Hmm. Are we doing something wrong here? Yeah, I suppose they can come and support the pawn. So it's the... Oh! Okay, so it looks like our rook is losing the spot. So I'll just bring it up. Right, now it looks like we've lost a bit of tempo. Yeah, so they've supported this pawn here. We could take, but he's going to have a... But he's still got that pass pawn, in a sense, semi-pass pawn. My bishop feels a bit jammed in. Um, you know, I feel like I might be losing this. But I don't want to tell the opponent that. We want to kind of maybe throw, get a swindle in there. Let's look at the attack areas. Let's focus on the king. We're going to have to do a bit of a swindle here because I don't think we're winning on this um, ABC file area. So maybe we should start actioning. So let's go and attack the knight. Moving towards the king area, making space for the dark square bishop to maybe challenge their dark square bishop get our queen in there so they've moved the knight now attacking our rook yes i don't think this is a good position for us i think i'm going to just focus on the king area as best possible and uh, see where we go from there so it'll give them something to think about hopefully fingers crossed we can um, swindle this one i know some people may frown on swindling it's just that i think i've made a mistake in the opening bit so we're going to attack this pawn here we're doubly attacking with the knight and the bishop so that's the answer process anyway and everybody makes mistakes and i think using the answer process does help in a way sort of get a good focus back onto how you can really try and um, get a better advantage in the game because i could lose the rook here where bishop could go and attack his king then our bishop can take his rook blah blah, blah. queen can take back so it's no big big shakes so we've actually got them rattled, even though we're, I believe we're in a losing position. So we're going to have to move the rook, it looks like. But it's not. It, the rook is in the centre of the board. Our mantra is, rooks don't have any place in the centre of the board, unless it's to my benefit, and it's not to my benefit. Oh, if I move down, look at what his pawn can do. His pawn could actually take our pawn, you know, and then it's going to be on the rook. And then he's going to have a passer. Oh, we need to do something away from that area. Is there potential for bringing the queen tripling up? Does that give more threat to the opponent? Give them something to think about? I think so. Bishop can come and support. Um, just ignore it. He takes. Bishop takes with a check. King moves. And then the knight's got a nice position. 
on G3 putting a check on so we might we're going for a big swindle here so he's instantly brought his bishop there so he's already aware of this situation but I think we could still compile some pressure on could bring the rook back down attack the knight but I'm very worried this pawn is just going to take this pawn here is it strong though rook comes down pawn takes it's just the rook can't do anything then the pawn can push down but it's I suppose it can't really go anywhere, can it? I don't, it can't really go anywhere, but it doesn't feel good. My rook is strangulated. He could play for a draw, just balancing his knight up and down. If his pawn takes, his pawn's on the rook, rook can't go back up. Rook can't, uh, so he's, oh, he looks like he's gone for the draw line. I mean if he wants to go for the draws I can just move my rook back up and down I have no issues there because something went wrong with that opening part for my rook to be all squished like this is this is not clever but I still want to I don't want to tell the opponent <laughs> that they're winning I don't want to show that they're winning in the game because somehow some way even though my rook is squished if he's going to go for the draw which is the knight then fair enough we'll wear that but if he does something different then we might be onto a good little bit of a swindle situation with our pieces being in front of his king ah so now this is the swind we can just go in and attack his rook and the knight's in a nice position there white square bishop's got activity queen's got activity Oh, and the knight can. There's an x ray through with the bishop onto the rook. Oh, my word. But there's no finish. <laughs> so we'll attack the bishop here with a discover check on the rook. There's no real finish. This is all just because we're in the king area. And it looks like we've got the opponent kind of scared of what we potentially might have. But we don't have anything. Could go for the draw. <laughs> knight going and attacking the rook. So bring it back, yeah, okay, so where does the rook want to go? Is he not looking for a draw? He's probably looking to actually go for a win. If I was in his shoes, I, he, I would be going for a win because in essence, they are winning. Even though my pieces are in front of his king, there's no finish at the minute. I would have to sacrifice something. Ah, so he's moved his rook now supporting the pawn. So we could attack his bishop. His bishop is kind of trapped, but then he would do this and then he's gonna get bought one of our rooks. So that's not good so we could take the rook off the board with the bishop with the stealth bishop and to me that was kind of lucky so now we're looking to try and advance see if the queen takes off if he doesn't then we take the queen for free so we've gained an advantage from the attack in the king area that's like a, the biggest swindle ever um, I didn't want to tell the opponent that they were winning by doing non non attacking moves and we changed the tables and the opponent actually then followed our suit they felt some sort of pressure towards their king and then from there it looks like they've lost the advantage because we're where the exchange up at the minute how this is going to work after that i don't know so we could take the bishop off the ball because we do have more material in a sense positionally not too bad it's a bit jammed in so i'm gonna to have to take this pawn he's, he's got a pass he's got two passes if he lets it go we're actually on his bit oh and we've got the bishop how lucky is that oh dear okay so they must have wondered how on earth did i get this position how on earth did i have managed to get these pieces off the board when they had so much pressure on this a b and c to me it was a swindle and the answer helped us with the swindle with a good focus on swindling the opponent it's not finished yet he's got two past pawns so i'm gonna have to block each one of them and he does have a dodgy knight now which is looking to start putting forks on us so i'm gonna have to move the knight bring the knight back in so bring it down bring it down then block this pawn off that's uh, here 
and that should stand as income stick because we were attacking um, the D pawn as well. And he's attacking our rook with his, but then we could take, but then he's got that there and he's on our knight. Knight has to move and then he has an annoying passer. Rook would come across. Rook would come across, but it gives him tempo to start maneuvering his rook. Although we would have a knight and a, a rook against his rook. I don't want to take that chance. I think there's a better um, formation. His knight's just going to jump back and block. Hmm. Let's go for the open file, but his knight's just going to come back and block. But at least it gives him something to focus on so our knight can come here and then attack his pawn. Uh, so his knight's like um, doubly overworked in a sense. He's moved the king. So we could bring the knight to attack the pawn. He could bring his knight round as a blocker but also defending the pawn as well. We could take and then if he takes then we get his rook off the board. So that's another continuation. It's just that he would have two like um, linked pawns and the rook against two linked pawns doesn't usually work too well even though we do, will have the knight i think it's hard work dealing with two linked pawns when they're so far advanced down the board so it is a nice touch but i would need to be able to get rid of one of these pawns um on the c or the b when it ends up there that sounded very technical in my head i know what i'm talking about so yeah so the knight blocks so like i said we could grab but am I willing to, I would lose the knight actually, because if we take and then I take his rook, then his pawn takes. And then I would, oh, I'd be able to move the rook across and get one pawn off, but then he's got that passer and I'm going to have to keep my rook there forever and a day. Could get the king over, but that's no guarantee. I want a bit of a guarantee situation. Could do a two on one but he's definitely going to go and uh, get a four so it could move the rook first so then if he decides to come down then we can move the rook up attack the knight and then eventually get the pawn off in the meantime getting the knight up there looking to attack his rook but also attacking the pawn on d a lot of things to me this is a crucial tempo count win it might be simple to everyone else but in my head we've got to block off these two pass pawns that they've got if we negate those and think we're good just because we're up like a, a rook um we could lose out quite easily so bringing the knight here looking to try and get rid of the connection on a d pawn by attacking and going through onto the c c2 but no, he's going for the rook, so the rook can probably move up a little bit like we were going to. Or we could come down and attack the knight. Not too sure if that's a good thing though, because uh, he could come here blocking the pawn, but then again he's got this pawn that's ready to jump down. So I think going up is the safer option, we did cover this one before. And then it does allow us the opportunity at some stage maybe to double up the rooks on the A-file. But his knight is looking very poisonous at the minute so the only safe place it's got is going back onto the b4 b5 as as we already know but then we can then double up our rooks it's not moving from that spot but we can't double the rooks because the knight is there so we could attack his rook attacking the pawn so we do actually win the pawn so now we're starting the process of getting rid of some of the strengths that they've got so now we can take the pawn and maybe eventually the rook can take the c pawn depending on what they do so they've moved it out of the way so the knight can take this pawn just looking to see if there's any x-rays through it's not an important thing really that one because the knight can move it's got his knight protecting well blocking that area so we've got rid of the pawns that could cause us a problem 
so now we just need to look to see what else they can actually do with their pieces is there a way of trapping this um, knight now or are we looking to exchange down the knight doesn't really have anywhere to go apart from that square but now if he oh and they've given up <laughs> okay so yeah the, the knight had nowhere to go now and what we if it had jumped back to the position i think we'll cover it in a minute um, so yeah so let's have a look at the gauge bar situation here this was got to be my ultimate swindle one of my many ultimate swindles <laughs> um where it just doesn't feel right and it feels like the opponent is actually winning you've messed up a tempo somewhere so somewhere around here something went wrong i think didn't look major but it's felt like um i've not been in that sort of position before now my rook's there bishop's attacking and now my rook is stuck in the middle of the board look at the gauge bar yeah so it's showing white as um winning really and so we decided to change the tables and attack the king area and still showing white as winning here i thought something didn't feel right so i'm, I'm going for my swindle as big as possible so the opponent had an out and out win really if you have a look at this gauge bar look at that wow that is so scary but we ignored all of that because we said we don't want to let the opponent know that they're actually winning we wanted to create our own winning situation somehow wow absolutely losing i'm just thinking this pawn taking was the problem but again i don't see the full continuation for it but i believe the pawn taking would have done something uh, if i move my rook up and attack his bishop it's not going to make much difference but that would have been my mindset of getting more pieces towards his king area gauge bar has not changed much but that's what potentially i would have done so the fear element of this pawn because we do have the rook at the minute if this pawn was pushing down and pushing down the rook would be able to just sacrifice while we've got so many pieces around their king so yeah awesome position but we didn't want to let the opponent know that they had an awesome position we were happy to go for a draw if they went and repeated so they gave us the opportunity to actually gain a winning position but then lose the winning position <laughs> look at that gauge bar going up and down <laughs> oh cranky okay yeah so in the end then they gave up their rook so that gave us a bit of an advantage but it's material <gasps> look at that doesn't like that queen exchange at all oh absolute nightmare whoa look at that unbelievable right okay so now it's showing us as a bit of an advantage kind of like an out and out win but as we showed it wasn't an out and out win it wasn't easy we still had to jostle our pieces our opponent was nice and clever they knew that they had two pass pawns they were continuing the pressure and we had to find the appropriate positions to then gain the advantage